so the Saponamon sub-analysis is very uh, um, uh, unique, and, and, and I think it's great because it really does get into that question of can we dichotomize our patients, right? So we, we know that there's a younger group and there's an older group, um, and we really wanted to then look at is there a difference in the drug working on one group or the other, right? Um, Sipinamod is an S1P1 uh, selective, P1P5 selective modulator, uh, uh, so we know it has a peripheral effect. So it definitely will reduce peripheral lymphocytes. Um, it should have an effect on inflammation and attacks, right? Which then we would think that if younger patients have more inflammation, they would should also have more effect than an older patient group, which has less peripheral inflammation. Is there still an effect? Now, the original Sipinamod study was looking for um, secondary progressive MS patients and looking for um, their primary outcome was a three-month confirmed disability followed by six-month confirmed disability progression. And in the overall trial, there was a benefit when you looked at the over group on both of those endpoints. Um, so then we split it because uh, Sipinamod was approved for the active secondary progressive MS. Uh, we then defined the subgroup in looking at just active secondary progressive MS patients. Uh, they were defined as active if they had either a clinical relapse or a new GAD enhancing lesion within the last two years. So in that subgroup, we then split them into younger than 45 and greater than including 45. And in both groups, it actually looked fairly similar, their efficacy on both of those two endpoints. So it didn't seem that age mattered the, the drug worked in both age groups on at least disability endpoints. The other um, part of that was then, was there any safety signals that were different between the two groups? And they looked fairly similar as well. So the um, uh, decrease in lymphocytes, uh, um, uh, lymphopenia, um, liver uh, abnormalities, infection risks were similar, younger than 45 as well as greater than and including 45. So that's kind of reassuring that this drug works in both a younger population, an older population, safety seems to be about the same. Uh, we still kind of need to tease out, um, is 45 really the age we should be splitting patients into? But the, uh, the reason why 45 was picked is because it, it gave us good balanced numbers to actually be able to make a comparison. If you have uh, way too many patients in one group and the other one, then it, you're introducing other biases that might not be as appropriate.